Scott, you gave me some notes this time. I like this. I like I like that I have something to pull from. But Uh-oh. for this segment, you just have the words end of the world, mm. which is a... Uh, oh, I meant to tell you the world's ending. <laughs> Did I not bring that up before? Is this how I find out? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's on that piece of paper I just typed up. Well, it's good to know. I'm glad I got the heads up. Uh, end of the world. What does that mean, Scott? Well, you know, I have a lot of end of the world conversations with people. And it's, you know, it's, it could be 9-11, it could be any number of their politician they liked didn't get elected, the party that they liked didn't win, their team didn't, you know, red or blue didn't win, so the world's going to end. Um, you know, it's funny because people think politics are bad now, and they are, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, we won't go there, but politics have always been bad. I mean, think about Hamilton, which is a very popular play right now, right, on, on Broadway. I mean, literally... One guy shot another guy in Congress. <laughs> yeah. The vice president was shot and killed. That's pretty bad. Yeah, a little worse than today. Yeah, let's I mean, <laughs> I'm not rooting for that to happen, but that did happen. So no, people think because there there's something they don't like is occurring, which is pretty much every day, that the world's gonna end. And Scott, by the way, what can I do with my money in that event? When the world ends, what should I own? This is the hilarity of the conversation. Yeah, a little bit of irony in here. There's going to be a mushroom cloud, and I would like to know what I should own. And, and, you know, what I've said before, and I will continue to say, is if you, let me give you this scenario. Exxon, AT&T, DuPont, Procter & Gamble, Microsoft, Apple, Coke, PepsiCo, Caterpillar, all of these major IBM all go out of business. Amazon, all out of business. They're all bankrupt. They're all out of business. There's big zeros, assuming a stock market would exist, which it wouldn't. You think there's a scenario where all of these companies go out of business and we're not fighting over apples in the street? Because that's that's not reality. Reality is it's Road Warrior at that point. Mm-hmm. We're all getting these cool cars with the, the mangy dog and our shotguns, and that's what the world looks like. So the idea that you're preparing a portfolio for that is ludicrous, number one. So you have to go the other way. You have to assume that the world's not going to end. Because if it does, that takes care of itself. Yeah. Right? So let's play the statistical, the, the, stat, the stats that are in our favor, which is the world's not going to end. And let's pretend that these companies are all going to go down and have bad days, but they're coming back. We're still going to drink Coke. We're still going to eat cornflakes. We're still going to brush our teeth. We're still going to drive cars. All of those things are still going to pretty much happen. Mm. So my point is, if you're having that end of the world bunker discussion with your financial advisor, if they're looking at you funny, it's with good reason. Because there is no portfolio that Scott Brown can build where the mushroom cloud goes off and the troops are rolling and things yeah. are going on and they go, no, leave him alone. Ryan's good because Scott Brown built that portfolio for him. Don't <laughs> he's throw got him- that AMC stock. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> he's yeah, He's got Robin Hood, man. It's all good. So, no, that's not a thing. <laughs> no, so- because you'd be using your stocks to make a fire uh, to live at that point, right? Yeah, and the other hilarious thing people say is gold, which is, you know, gold's doing well right now because gold's kind of a trade that does well when markets are, are not are misbehaving. But it's just a trade. And people say, well, I'll have gold. I'll say that's great. Have you ever seen Pale Rider with Clint Eastwood where the guy finds the big nugget of gold and he's walking through the middle of town drinking his booze and the four guys walk up with guns and make him dance, shooting his feet, shoot his gold in half and shoot him in the head and take the gold? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the currency is going to be gunpowder mm-hmm. and bullets. If we come to that point, it's not like there's some orderly thing where you walk through town with your gold paying for milk and goods and nobody bothers you. At the end of the world, right? So these are these are silly conversations that people have with one another, uh, and with me sometimes. Um, and this is this unfortunately this is the best way I can bring home the point that let's prepare for the best outcome or a good outcome. Let's not spend a lot of time on the end of the world. Yeah, it's it's more like there's going to be downtimes. There's never not going to be a downtime, from what I understand, from what you've talked about. Like where you got to play it slow and smart in the lame way, and you know. Yeah. But but there's uh, it's it always going to go lame down. way. Let's call it that the <laughs> lame way. You know Scott's <laughs> way, which is the correct way, but it doesn't involve me buying meme stocks. Uh, so that's if if the the whole world falls apart. That's the whole world falling apart, right. and there's no financial portfolio no, that you can build for that. No, let's all have a drink but and you say can, goodbye. But you can definitely build one for uh, – there's going to be rough spots, and just history has proven that there always will be just little bumps 
here and there, and you prepare from from that on. Is well, that what you're trying to convey? That is what I'm trying to get. So it's capitalism. Cap- capitalism is messy, right? We think capitalism is is the system which uh, so far to date has been the best system we've come up with for distributing wealth. There's some issues today with it that maybe it's not pure free market capitalism that we have around here, and we're trying to figure that part out, right? Um, and, you know, it's natural for any system as it gets older to struggle, and democracies are messy. We're proving that. Um, but they're still effective. They're just effective in spurts. So when we all get mad and then there's some political activity and then there's a war and then this happens and that happens and things go down and they struggle and the economy struggles, we have a recession or a depression, interest rates go up, inflation's a problem. These are all things, but they're all components of this thing we call capitalism, right? So if we do it right, it works really, really well. But even if we do it right, it struggles from time to time. And that's true of a company, right? You look at a company like Apple. Apple's a great example. You know, Steve Jobs built a- Apple and it was going great and things were going wonderful and then they weren't. And then the company struggled and he got fired and bad stuff happened. And then everybody said, Apple sucks. So I'm not buying it. And those Macs look weird. And what is that? And, you know, they don't understand the interface and yada, yada, yada. And then they hired Steve Jobs back and now Apple's the greatest company that ever was. So my point is, here we go. This We're going to call this Scott's Lame Process. I'm going to have to copyright that, by the way. Scott's Lame Process is discipline. You have to have process, and you have to have discipline to understand. I bought – if you if you're buying Tesla, and I'm not suggesting you should or should not buy Tesla, you're not buying it because it's a good buy right now, right? No, I mean, it's sexy. It's sexy, and you're buying – what you're buying is Elon Musk and the vision that this – crazy, half crazy dude has for changing the world and landing on Mars and building tunnels and all kinds of weird stuff. Now, the fact of the matter is he doesn't sell near as many cars as Ford and his company's worth twice what Ford is or something. It's insane. So when you look at that fundamentally, you say that doesn't make any sense. But if you say, I'm not buying the stock because its earnings are better than another stock. I'm buying the stock much for the same reason I would have bought Apple, for the man and the mission. Right, So that's that's a thoughtful way to think about something. Again, I'm not advocating for buying Tesla, but I'm trying to make a point is when you purchase something, you're purchasing the company. Think of it like Warren Buffett would. Warren Buffett doesn't buy stocks. He buys ownership in companies. And if you believe in Microsoft or you believe in Apple or you believe in Procter & Gamble or you, you say people are always going to brush their teeth, hopefully – so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to buy Hope a company they do in this office. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to a couple of you. But the reality is that's what you're buying. You're buying a company, you're not buying a stock. And if you view it that way, you would not have bought AMC. You would not have bought GameStop because those are crappy companies. Those are companies are, that are going to likely go out of business. But you bought them because it sounded sexy because everybody else was buying it and because Robin Hood wanted you to buy it. So, I mean, it, it, it comes back to blocking and tackling. It comes back to being thoughtful. It comes back to taking the, as much of your reflective or reflexive rather brain out of the situation. So whenever you buy something, you're getting ready to buy something, right before you push the button, stop and think, why am I doing this? And you say it's your reflexive brain doing all the that that's that's making the mistake. When I when I go to a financial advisor like you, is that what you're taking out? Trying from me, I <laughs> or do trying. I still have a level of control? You do have. I mean, the control is it's your money. It's you know, as an advisor, we never lose sight of whose money it is. But you know, you asked me last week if I've ever had awkward conversations. The only time I have awkward conversations is when I believe a client is getting ready to do something detrimental to their cause. If they've come in and they've said, I'm trying to accomplish this, and I need to retire in seven years, and I save this much money, and this is what I have invested, and they and then they call me up one day and say, I want to buy AMC. I want to put it all in AMC, right? Which, stop calling me, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> but if they if they do that, then they're gonna I'm going to say, look, you need to fire me because I'm not doing that, right? That's what a good advisor would say is, you can do that, but it ain't going to be on my watch, right? And, it, and to be fair, it doesn't happen much. People who, advi- who hire advisors are typically thoughtful people. They like the camaraderie. They like the teamwork. They like the process. And they usually commit to it. But sometimes it can get awkward. 
Well, if you want to get awkward with Scott, that number is 407-648-1881 with Edgewater Family Wealth and edgewaterfamilywealth.com. We'll be right back with our final segment of It's Only Money.